me. I'm done. And I got a haircut. Thanks, sis. Uh, it seems that my video for a borderline personality has over the 100 likes already. I'm super stoked about that. And I've been going through a lot of anxiety and things the past week where I've been putting those skills to use and I really, I mean, I tried to the day to film, I don't know what I was doing. I have some good points in that, so I guess this, like, second borderline personality thing, update, whatever I'm trying to say here, is going to be in two parts. Because I did have some good, I did have some really good content and some good points. And the other one, I just rambled forever, and to try to find them, take a while. But today, I think, is the best day for me to bring this here. Um, one, I want to welcome our newest subscriber. I think it's LAEC. I don't know. This subscriber's sole purpose is to leave negative comments about my negativity. Whatever. You do you, I'll do me. We're cool. Alright. So, again, let's talk about borderline personality disorder. I know I've explained, you know, kind of what it is. My last video that I made about borderline personality disorder was more of a explaining what it is from a diagnostic standpoint. And since then, I've grown, I've learned things, um, feeling the best that I've ever felt in my life. And I owe it all to the DBT, which is the therapy for borderline personality disorder. Medication, I mean, can kind of help, but it's therapy, and therapy isn't always easy. It's not always fun. I didn't agree with the everything that I, you know, did with the therapy, and I did have my days where I was like, this is stupid. And I, I might have actually said something even meaner than that about it. But there's method to that madness. I don't understand what it is. I don't care. It worked. Yes, there is makeup on this channel. And yes, I do my makeup. And I do pretty things. And I don't think it matches my shirt, but I don't care. <laughs> it's important when it comes to skills. Not only for people with, you know, borderline, but anybody, anybody, that, anything. It's called self-care. Will you look after yourself? Do something for you. In my case, you know, I like doing this. There's people that I know that don't like makeup. It's, it's just not their thing. Fine. They do other things. Maybe they take a really long bath with candles and they listen to music. It doesn't matter what it is, but if it's to make the body healthy, to make the mind feel better, who cares? As long as it makes you happy and it's not illegal and you're not hurting little children, I don't care and nobody else should either. And yeah, the past few days have been really hard. Mostly, you know, it does have the borderline personality and there is my anxiety that jumps into that. And I know the fans aren't really, but it's warm here and I even thought I can't. So I'm gonna talk about the skills that I learned and I put through and how some of the things that have been going on for like the past year are completely my fault. It was me bringing everything on to myself, and I have now learned that, which makes me so much happier in life. It's so much better. But we're gonna first talk about like, yes, there's anxiety, and and what does it feel like to live as someone who's borderline personality? Because I want to say this, and I don't want to sound like a jerk, and I know someone's probably gonna think I am, but today's world. People are expecting everybody to bend and comply to them. I get how we do need a little bit more acceptance and we need stuff, but they're going a little too far, and that's my personal opinion. And I think that, you know, we need to adapt to the rest of the world. As in we, I mean people who have some kind of difficulties, in my case, you know, there's the borderline personality thing that's in there that I'm extremely well working on. 
I also have a little bit of like high functioning autism and all those agoraphobia, whatnot. They're all intermingled and they all kind of came from the same spot in my brain. And yes, I need a little bit of help, but do I expect the other 8 billion people on this planet to change how they live their lives and how they do things every day because I have a problem with their world? No. I have to learn how to navigate your world even though all these things, because if not, I'm, I'm screwed. It's called adapt or die. And yes, I have learned this. Wow, what a nice realization. Because once you realize that, once you start realizing that the world doesn't owe you anything, this, this, it just gets lifted off your shoulders. And this is a whole thing that, unfortunately, borderline people kind of get stuck with. So, in a nutshell, borderline personality as emotions. We don't know how to, one, recognize the emotion that we're actually feeling. This is like before therapy, right? That was a therapy. That's what it did. But without therapy, we get caught up with emotions and we don't necessarily quite know what it is. And we might react in anger when we are feeling frustrated. And those are two different ways. But when you're stuck in this emotion, when you have borderline and you're in this emotional state, you don't know what emotion you're having. So... Sometimes you need to feel like, or we on the inside feel like we are feeling five different emotions at once. Usually it's not, because again, through these steps, I've learned how to figure out which one I'm actually feeling. So not knowing what it is, one gives us confusion, and then confusion gives us more emotions, and the more emotions we get, the more hyped up and the more reaction and exploding that happens. And sometimes that happens, and sometimes that unfortunately happens in what they call that verbal diarrhea, where we just kind of spread everything out. Yeah, I did that. I know. I totally do. And even now, to this day, I have been able to recognize that sometimes what I'm trying to say, and what I think is coming out of my mouth, is not the message that I'm conveying, which is why... My best friend Mel is now, you know, she was always my sounding board, but she's on board with this to help me out to make sure that this message is getting out the right way with the right words. I don't want to mess this up because I've got a good thing going. I'm very happy with it. And if some people don't like it. I don't care, which is a great thing that I've now realized. So yeah, being stuck in those emotions are counterproductive because when we're stuck in those emotions and we're saying things we're having a reaction well you know the laws of Newton every action is an opposite and equal reaction the more we push out the more people are gonna come back at us when people come back at us it doesn't matter if they're actually attacking us or not we are perceiving it as being attacked straight off sometimes they're trying to help sometimes they're giving advice we're all seeing it and taking it in as being attacked. The more we're attacked, the more there's emotion. So we're fueling our own fire. It is hell living in that. And I'm so stoked that I am now out, you know, partly able to deal with a lot of things because I'm so happy. Life is, you know, challenging, but I'm cool. I'm going to do this. You're probably asking right now, like, what are you talking about? You, you don't look worried or anxious or... And I haven't been... Because I've learned the steps and I've learned things and I have support. I have the best friends in the world. And again, I've also learned that friendships are, don't have to be there at the snap of a finger. Sometimes they have other things to do. They'll get back to you when they can. That's a borderline thing. That is one of our biggest traits. <sighs> that is hard for us to deal with is that borderlines have a fear of abandonment whether it is real or not so in the DSM whatever 
four or five, whichever you want to look at. It says that the fear of abandonment, whether it is real or perceived, so that means that sometimes we have a fear that someone's going to abandon us. And I don't necessarily mean abandon as in like walking away. I mean, yes, that is a fear, but abandonment also means that we're going to be left to our own devices. And seeing that we already are confused about, you know, emotions and we can't seem to try, you know, it gets frustrating trying to return an item sometimes to a store is frustrating and, and, you know, being left up to our own devices is super scary. BPD comes from childhood trauma. And the trauma doesn't have to be that somebody abandoned you and left you behind, but it does leave as an adult when you have BPD that there is this sense of abandonment and when you feel like you're going to be left alone or someone that you care about is no longer going to be in your life, you freak the F out. And in most cases, people will either try to or threaten to end their lives. Thankfully in my case, that's not usually the first thing I jump to. It has happened that I've gone that far. But usually, no. I'm, I'm lucky. I'm very lucky and thankful that that part is something that I don't... Mm, don't want to put down the people that do because it, it's hard. Sometimes it's just how it works. And that's where the DBT started. Um, Marsha Linehan, the person who, who did the first DBT because there's different iterations of it. The one I followed was her plan. She figured it out when she realized that there's all these people that keep like trying to commit suicide over and over and over again and then you know this sort of came out and it's all in our heads and it sucks because sometimes we know it's all in our heads like this past week this thing I've been going through I knew it was all in my head the logic part of my brain would say to me there's no way this is gonna happen like you're you're really reaching you're going far-fetched the logic part knew it but there's this tiny little voice in the back of my mind that kept saying but maybe but maybe this bad thing will happen you never know this bad thing could happen and yes all the scenarios of bad things that could possibly happen revolving that thing were in through my mind and that's where I went to my skills I did things that are distracting, which is one thing to do, keep your mind off of it, but I also did something that's called opposite action. So my fear, I'll put it out there, my fear that I've been going through is that I would be asked to leave my apartment. The long story of how and why isn't important to any of you, but it just bottles down to the fact that, again, I have to learn to adapt to the world. I have to learn to let go that there may be things happening around me, it doesn't concern me, and I don't need to do anything about it. The landlord kind of got a little bit tired, and you know, I don't blame him, because that's stuff to do. He's busy. He runs a campground, he works full time, but he's also a very, very nice guy. He wouldn't screw me over the way that, you know, my brain was thinking it would, so that was a part of the logic that kept, you know, so I was fighting back and forth with my own brain for like three or four days. And I think every single one of my friends and support that was there when I would call and be like, look, I know this makes no sense, but this is what's going through my head. So my opposite action that I did, so I did two at the same time, distraction, because I was organizing stuff. I did the opposite action. I went into my closet that's in my living room and I actually cleaned it out and organized it. Because when I moved in here, this apartment, um, over a year ago, I just kind of threw everything into that closet, because my shoes and jackets. And I mean, I didn't need it to be organized. I mean, I wear the same shoes almost every day. But why not? That was me telling the anxiety to shut up because I'm staying. I'm not going anywhere. And to prove myself that, I moved in even more. Wow. Wow. Anybody that knows me that has known me in my life, I would never have done that. 
Never. And this is a new thing. One, it was fun. I had a good time. I ended up finding things that I forgot had been lost into the land of Never Never Land. <laughs> and um, all sorts of other things. And organizing also makes me happy. It's a thing that I like. Again, there's an OCD thing going on as well. And it appealed to more than one thing. It took me the whole afternoon. I took my time, had some YouTube going, and it gave me a sense of accomplishment. It distracted me. It was good in like 16 different kind of ways. Yay. I don't know how much to explain. I don't know how to convey my emotions very well, and not necessarily because of like BPD stuff. There's also like an autism thing in, in here. So me being happy and expressing my happiness doesn't always happen in the way that social convention wants things to happen. And I'm sorry. And on that point, yes, I do need to, you know, again, learn how to adapt to your world. But I also came to all these conclusions, which are amazing, that I figured out again with BPD. All right. Are you sure you're ready? Can you handle this? Because anybody out there, again, that has known me for more than five years are going to probably flip out. When you hear me say these and think back over the past few months of my Facebook posts and world life things and realize that I'm not just saying this, that I've applied it and it's in my head. I've learned a few things, which I find are my biggest accomplishments in life. Because again, I need to look out to the world and yes, a lot of the things that were happening were my fault. So one of the things that I have totally realized is, yes, I created my own monster. I am solely responsible for all that. So all the things, you know, in the, the buy and sell and whatever things where people were coming back at me and whatnot, it mostly was my own fault. It was. Now why? Hmm. Now why? And why did DBT help me with that? Well, one, I had learned that you cannot make somebody else respect you. Even if it should be given. It doesn't necessarily mean they have to. And I expected and I could understand why people didn't believe me and didn't respect the fact that I know things about electronics. I went to college, I figured it out. I used to be an ATM tech. However, it occurred to me one day that I don't look like one. I don't, I mean, I know there's not supposed to be, you know, gender typing, but it still happens. And again, it's Facebook, so everybody picks their best picture of themselves. So it's usually me with makeup and jewels and whatnot and nails. Those is, those things are not usually what you attribute to a tech who installs electronics and ATMs and all that kind of whatnot. I get it. I don't look the part. And more than that, the people who are responding to me, they don't know me from a stick in the mud. So all they have is my picture and the fact that at the time, I wasn't exactly the nicest person when I would approach the subject. I've also learned how to do that better. I'm learning, I'm learning every day, every single day. Constructive criticism is great. I, I embrace it and I'm even learning to take it when it's not necessarily said to me in a nice way either. It's, it's cool, I can work on that. If there's a subject or whatever, I can, you know, just let me know. That's not a cool thing to talk about or don't say this or, or whatever. I have different friends, you know, from work mostly, that like different things. And I'm learning, I'm learning, hey, that certain people don't want to talk about certain subjects. So I don't talk about those subjects with those people. Wow. What a thing. Me figuring that out. Hey. I'm telling you. It's therapy stuff. The bomb, man. So borderlines have a thing where we feel disrespected easily and we also don't understand why we're disrespected and that goes back to the whole emotion things and the fear of abandonment and whatnot we're not going to go into more details 
I hit the camera again. <laughs> but we're not going to go into more details because that's not the point. I'm just giving you like what it's like from the point of view of someone who's lived through it and has now got a clearer head and can look back and reflect. So I'm not reading this from a book. I'm not somebody who read it in a book and has a suit and tie. I'm someone who's lived it. And so that just makes it my personal opinion and my experience. However, my experience and personal opinion are also backed up by professionals. So if there's anything in this that is incorrect, they are going to tell me and I will fix it. Now, the next thing that I have learned is one of the best things that I have ever learned. And that is what's worth fighting for, when you should fight for it, so now these days, if I pick a fight with someone, which doesn't happen, but if I give my opinion out in public, which I have recently, I think about it. I think I weigh all the options because now I understand that there's more than just what I think on the line. There's a bunch of other things on there. And the first time I did my opinion, again, my message didn't get out correctly, and I ended up hurting a few people that weren't doing anything wrong. But, I thought about it, wrote it down, put up a video correcting my mistakes, and those people have since then thanked me for correcting the misinformation that I put up the first time. I'm learning. I'm not perfect. I'm not striving to be perfect. Nobody should try to be. It's impossible. You can't be. But you can try to be the best you that you can be. And I am trying to be the best me, and I'm feeling so much happier, and... Yay. So I learned what's worth fighting for, when to, but one, which is the best thing, I've learned when to shut up and walk away. I need like the laughing, clapping tracks from like, you know, friends and the TV shows that are like taped in front of like no live studio audience. That is such a relief where I can just be like, you know what? This conversation is just someone that wants to fight. There are people out there that just like to pick a fight with people. There's also other people out there that happen to be in the shoes that I was. I'm not judging anyone, right? You're allowed to have your opinion. I, I already know this. I've already said this before, however. Everybody is entitled to have their opinion. Whether you like it or not, doesn't matter to anybody else. If I have an opinion on something, as in I love the color pink, you don't have to like the color pink. You can be like, no, no, I like the color blue. That's fine. We can have whatever opinion we want. Nobody has to like our opinion. And we shouldn't have to defend it. It's an opinion. It's not a fact. It's just how we feel about something. And if people don't like it, we have no right to be offended that somebody doesn't like our opinion. Ha, huh. I had to learn that one too. And I have. The weight of the world is off my shoulders, people. It's off my shoulders. So, learning to shut up and walk away? Hmm. Yes. I've done that. I've done that many times, and it's helped so much. And with all of those, I've also learned how to calm down. Sometimes I do get to that point of emotions where I just want to lash out. And again, usually that's when you walk away and you shut up. And I'm, I'm thankful that I have the few friends now. Now I have more, you know, people to, to pick at. Again, not everybody's going to answer right away. And we have a thing as borderlines again. We don't realize. And in my case, I didn't think about the fact that other people in this world had other things to do. It's not like I expected them to be at my beck and call. I just didn't think about it. It didn't occur to my mind that my mom had a job. You know? She had other responsibilities. Calling her 10 times a day to ask her questions to me that are super important aren't super important to her and they're disrupting her day. I get that now, all right? I get that. And the fact that I have any kind of mental illness and whatnot doesn't excuse the fact that I did things in the past that might have insulted people or hurt people's feelings. You can't use that as an example, no. You can't use that as an excuse. You can't use the fact that you're autistic or, or that you have schizophrenia or whatever as an excuse for bad behavior. 
However, sometimes bad behavior still happens. And when it does, you have one chance. You get one chance. When the bad behavior happens, you're told about it, and then it's your decision as the person to work on it, to never let it happen again. Which is the road and the path that I'm taking. Never going to do bad things again, because I'm going to learn. The first time, you kind of get a pass because maybe you didn't know. But after that, you know. And if you do it again, then I'm the asshole. If I do it a second time, I'm the jerk because I chose to do it because I know better by then. I know, this doesn't sound like me. Ooh, wow, oh, it's awesome, it's great. So the other last thing that I figured out, because by figuring all this stuff out, by the way, I saw my psychiatrist about two weeks ago in the middle of my concussion thing. So I was all over the place, had not too sure, but after 22 years of being followed by a psychiatrist, my psychiatrist now feels that I don't need a psych follower anymore. I've learned enough. As a psychiatrist, he's done his job. Medication wise, we're on the right path. We've got the right ones. I'm supposed to be getting a family doctor soon, end of August, I think. I don't know. The A11 lady was so super stoked when she called me to tell me that she had one. So let's hope that goes through. So that person can manage my medication stuff. And as for everything else, his professional opinion after, you know, 22 years is that I've learned enough that he doesn't need to be there. I still need mental health to help me, you know, to get these skills down pat so that they just come automatically. So I can just put them in there and, you know, be the best that I can be. Um, and these were his words, actually. I'm surprised. He literally said to me that maybe one day I won't even need mental health anymore. I'll be able to fly with my own wings. Wow. We're just going to keep moving and live the best life that we can. My sister and I are reconnected and it's the most amazing thing ever. I have a niece and nephew that I love to death and they actually love me back. And that's another kind of thing that's so amazing. I mean, I know I personally can't have children, but I love kids. Um, I have Isabelle who, you know, is now a grown woman. She's going to be married to the love of her life. But I was 15 when she was born and I was pretty much there every single day. And in a sense, she was my little girl. You know, she's kind of like my little sister in a way, but we have a bond that's, you know, loving. However, my niece and nephew are the cutest things ever. And hearing my nephew yell out super happy that he, you know, and run and that, oh my gosh, I'm a good person now. All those years where I thought, and again, this is what comes in your mind when you have borderline personality. You have these myths that just are there and it's these thoughts that float around that tell you, you know, no, 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 you're not good enough for stuff. You can't do this. Don't try it. You're not worth it. All these things go through your mind all the time. It sucks. And until you can learn to not listen to them, your life's living hell. So yeah, they're always going to be there. They're always going to be somewhere in the back of my mind. But this is why these skills are here, and this is why I talk about them, and this is why I keep doing them. And it's why, you know, the people that say, you know, you're agoraphobic, why do you go out? Same thing. It's skills. You have to practice them every single day so that when you come home from going in for an outing, you've come home and you realize you didn't die. Nothing happened. All your limbs are attached. You're okay. You know, it was scary. It was rough. It was four hours of sheer panic. However, you made it. And even this experience, now I'm okay, the outcome is, you know, it was all in my brain, it was all in my head. I went through it, I didn't, you know, go crazy and annoy people, I did the right thing and it came out as a positive experience. So what you do with that, you put them in your bank of life. So in the future, when you feel the same way again, when those negative thoughts come back in and they tell you, you're not good enough for this, you can't have that job, you can't have this, you can't have that. You can think back into your bank of life and be like, you know what? Last time that you were telling me this voice that I couldn't do something, guess what? I did it anyway. I went through, I got it done, 
Therefore, this time, I'm going to shut you up. I'm going to do it anyway. And now saying that, I now realize that everybody in the world can apply that to themselves, not even BGD people. I'm learning on the fly here, people. I don't know what's going on. I feel like a genius. The thing that I've realized the most and that has really sunken in and that has helped me the most in feeling okay and being with me and probably being able to actually do this channel, this, this thing that's getting a lot of attention, which is good. Again, I want to make sure that the attention goes in the right place. Is that my disability status isn't up for debate. I don't need to prove to anybody of you that it's there. You can ask me questions, you cannot agree with it, you cannot understand, that's fine. You're not to judge. I don't need to care if you agree with the fact that both the federal and provincial government have signed off that yes, disability, in my case, is a thing. Do I talk about every single little thing of why? No. Second, you don't know me. You don't know me from a stick in the mud. You're judging, and I've also learned that even if I were to, you know, sit down with those people and tell them the whole thing, they might not get it. Some people can't understand. They can't. And this is a thing that I really touched on and I got in the other video, so it'll be in the next part where I explain why some people, through no fault of their own, can't understand things beyond their own level of comprehension and their own level of experience. If you've never walked a mile in someone's shoes, Stop trying to expect somebody to understand what it's like to walk a mile in your shoes. And that goes for me. It goes for everybody else out there that thinks that the world owes them something. The world owes you nothing. You're not entitled to a darn thing unless, like, your grandfather has a bazillion dollars and gives you a small loan of a million dollars. Whatever. Right? You have to earn respect. In some places, you know, respect should be given, you know, mostly if you're dealing with, like, people of authority, you know, doctors, cops, whatever, um, you have to give them respect. But then if you don't get it in return from them, then all, all bets are off. But again, you can't just walk in and be like, respect me. It's not going to happen. And are they also going to understand? No, some people can't. If they've never been through, they just can't get it. And that's not their fault. And it's my problem. I've learned. It's my problem that I have a hard time accepting that they can't understand because, again, if you've never been there, how are you supposed to know? You know? If you've never been to an ocean, how are you supposed to know what an ocean feels like if you've only been in a pool? You know? So, that's my last thing. Is that people can say and think what the heck they want about me. You don't know me. And I don't care. And that's why I am inviting Mr. L-A-C or Mrs. I don't know. I don't want to assume your gender or anything. I don't know who you are. But welcome to the channel and leave as many negative comments as you want. I don't care. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. It's beautiful out there. It's hot in here. It's great out there. Thanks.